So let me give you some specifics about the military goals of Israel with their offensive in Gaza. They claim, of course, to be going after Hamas and also the tunnels in the region that they say are responsible for uh, bringing in weapons to Hamas. They go underground and they go to Egypt and then they come back through these tunnels. And the idea is, well, the reason why they have all these rockets to fire at Israel is because they're bringing them in through the tunnels. So if you collapse the tunnels, then boom, everything is taken care of and everything is much more stabilized. Now, we've already discussed the uh, unfortunate figures that are coming out of the attacks Israel has killed 77% civilians. That number is uh, as of a week ago from the UN. Uh, there are over 500 people dead as of right now. 73 of them are children. Many of them are women. But even if... So putting those numbers aside, which, by the way, pause, we shouldn't. Those are very important and those need to be uh, brought up in the conversation every time we discuss uh, the situation. But putting those aside briefly... Uh, even if they succeeded in destroying the tunnels, is that a good thing? Now, I totally understand, okay, if you if they sp specifically took out the areas where rockets were coming from, I could deal with it, okay? I could deal with it, because I'm against violence on both sides. I'm against violence coming from Hamas and uh, Gaza, and I'm definitely against violence coming from Israel. So if it was a targeted thing and they got, you know, attacked some top Hamas people who were actually engaged in violence, and they knew they are, then that's fine. And, you know, uh, Jank did a great segment about this the other day where he said special forces all day long. You got a problem? Somebody did something fucked up in the region that's a crime? Fine. Send in special forces, you know, uh, one, two, three, take care of it. And a lot of people might not like that because, hey, you're putting those people's lives in danger, but that's their job and that's what they're trained for, and you can be much more precise if you do that as opposed to just indiscriminate fucking bombing. But specifically to those tunnels... Even if they succeeded in destroying the tunnels, is that a good thing? Well, according to Think Progress, quote, At any one time, there are between 10 and 30 main tunnel shafts that go from Gaza to Egypt, financed by wealthy families in Egypt, and what they do is they charge money for people to use those tunnels. What passes through the tunnels makes up a substantial portion, if not the vast majority, of the Gazan economy. So, more details. Quote, In October 2011, United Nations figures estimated that 800,000 liters, or around 5,000 barrels of fuel, 3,000 tons of gravel, 500 tons of steel rods, and 3,000 tons of cement passed through the tunnels daily. The reason that such a large portion of the Gazan economy is dependent on the tunnels is that most other crossings into the territory are blocked off. So, they go on to explain that since 2007, when Hamas took control of the region, as opposed to what could be viewed as more liberal uh, factions of the people in the Palestinian territories, they decided to blockade it. Israel said, fuck that, if Hamas is in control, everything is getting blockaded. So, since everything is blockaded, they can't get a lot of the things that are necessary for survival. So, while it is certainly true that those tunnels are... that. That is the area where they can smuggle in some weapons, and those weapons, of course, unfortunately, are used against Israel, which is a bad thing. At the same time, that's where they get... Uh, l listen to this figure. I have another figure here. This is how important the tunnels are. They provide an estimated $700 million to the local economy. $700 million. Think about how much that is, especially in terms of Gaza. Dirt poor Gaza. That's everything. That's everything. So either... Either Israel ends at least part of the blockade, you don't even need to necessarily end all of the blockade, at least you end part of the blockade and allow in more supplies, allow in more food, allow in more stuff that people uh, can use as raw materials for making buildings and hospitals and infrastructure or whatever, right? Either end the blockade or if you fucking collapse the tunnels, you might make it an even worse humanitarian disaster. Okay, because you might make it so that people can't fucking eat in the region, they can't rebuild, the infrastructure is fucked up even further, and look, that leads, unfortunately, to the scary question, is that the goal? Is that what they're trying to do? What, you think Israel doesn't know these numbers? You think Netanyahu, the extreme right-wing lunatic Netanyahu, doesn't know these numbers? He probably does know these numbers, and that's probably the point, man. They're probably trying to expand further. We discussed this the other day. There, uh, There's uh, another... 
political party in uh, Israel to the right of the Likud party, which is Benjamin Netanyahu's right-wing party, and they said, oh, Netanyahu doesn't have our support anymore. Why? No, no, not because, hey, he's killing too many civilians with the bombing, because, oh, we should go back and uh, take Gaza. We should take the region. We should occupy that. So they want to push even further. Oh, boy. It, it's getting fucking scary out there, man. It's getting dirty out there. Look, if I'm if I'm President Obama, I'm doing everything I can to immediately cut off all military aid and funding to Israel. And look, it a lot of it has to do with this, but then again, it also has to do with the fact that I'm I'm pretty much a non-interventionist around the world. And a lot of these deals that we have going with all these different countries, including Egypt, by the way, and a bunch of others, uh, what we do is we give them a shitload of money, then they buy our weapons. It's part of the military-industrial complex, and it's a fucking giant fraud and a scam. It's the U.S. taxpayers funding for weapons that go to Egypt and Israel and everywhere. Fuck that. I'm cutting off all that if I'm in office, but especially with Israel. And not only that, I find it hilarious that, you know, when Russia goes in and annexes Crimea, oh my god, sanctions immediately, and conservatives over here talking about invading Russia. And uh, But when Israel goes from, in 1947... It's ba- the land is basically split up 50-50. Then they push further. The 1967 borders expand. Then they push further. In 2012, there's fucking almost nothing left for the Palestinians, right? And now, it looks like they might even be pushing further. And America sits there. <laughs> not only is there no discussion of sanctions, not only is there no discussion of cutting off the aid, politicians openly declare, well, Israel has a right to defend itself, and by that I mean do complete offense and fuck over a shitload of people and take more land and kill 77% civilians in the region when you're supposed to be the ones that are fighting for what's just. This is scary, and this is bad, and if you support this man, I'm sorry, but it doesn't make any sense. What what Netanyahu's government is, unfortunately, they are neoconservatives. He is a more articulate version of George Bush in the Middle East. That's all Benjamin Netanyahu is. Okay? He can hide behind, oh, Hamas is evil, Hamas is bad, blame Hamas, blame Hamas, blame Hamas. And look, it's certainly true. Hamas are not good people. I disagree with them on virtually everything. The fact that they shoot rockets is fucking stupid because it never works and it only justifies more violence against them. So yeah, Hamas is wrong for a lot of stuff. But here's what, uh, here's what you can't blame on Hamas. Your punk ass Netanyahu uh, doing this broad crackdown and killing so many civilians and uh, hurting a tremendous amount of people and breaking the region and expanding further. That's your problem and your fault, and you should not destroy these tunnels. Because if you do that, look, fine, destroy the tunnels, but then at least partially remove the blockade because people need to eat, they need to drink, they need more infrastructure, and you're not allowing them to have that. But again, I fear that may actually be on purpose.